Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. I hope everyone's having a good day wherever you are in the world. Um, we're just going to be looking at today um, why so many people go missing in Tenerife. Uh, I read a case on Irishman Peter Wilson went missing. The, f the father of two from um, Co Westmeath vanished while on holiday on the Canary Island in March 2019. I mean, he only went over there for a week. Um, it, it, the family now have been informed that remains of a body have been discovered on the island. The family of Peter Wilson are aware that remains of a body um, have found in Tenerife, they said in a statement, at this time we are uh, waiting for the remains of from the authorities in Tenerife. And that was, I mean, it was some time ago. He went missing in uh, a DG Santa Cruz de Tenerife. The family asked, the, the family asked that at the time, and especially in the light of the pandemic and the importance of adhering COVID-19 restrictions and guidelines, but also in the event that family may need to travel, uh, that their privacy respected at this time. In 2019, peace and travel to Tenerife on Friday, March, the uh, 26th for a week's long holiday with a friend. Very, very odd. He was last seen outside the Malibu Park Hotel where he was staying at around 11 p.m. on the 23rd and heading towards the tourist era of Playa de Les America where obviously you get your clubs, your bars and your party areas. His passport and personal belongings remain in his hotel room with Peter, um, with Peter only taking his mobile phone and wallet with him. Sounds like it was just a normal like they, uh, Garde has been assisting Spanish police with their investigations into the missing person. So that was that one, which was a very odd case because I, I think he was found in a ravine as well. Here's another one. Uh, missing man Mark Francis was last seen in southwest Tenerife. Official data from the Spanish Ministry of the Interior state that between 2020 and 2023, at least 460 adults went missing in the Canary Islands from a population of just 2.2 million. That's mad. That's just incredibly high in three years. Tenerife has the second highest number of missing people in the whole of Spain following uh, Adel Lucia. Uh, which has a population four times larger at 8.5 million. Jay Slater is said to be the 11th to go missing in Tenerife in just six months. Among the recently missing, a 70 year old Mark Francis, said to be a Belgian national who disappeared on April the 24th. He was last seen in Edgy in southwest Tenerife, says the SOS uh, de Presidas Association, which issues missing person appeals on the island. According to the Canary Weekly, Mark's wife, Laura Gaston, 66, was found floating off the East Coast. I heard about this off Tenerife near uh, Arico by a fisherman. She was missing one hand and both legs while her head was covered with a plastic bag. Someone asked me whether um, there's um, killers out there or something because something off key is really, really happening uh, out there. Another case, I heard about this case, this was uh, Natalie Believus and Vladimir um, Marcella. Three people were arrested after 66 year olds death, two in Belgium and one in Tenerife. Unconfirmed reports say a car and another body were found nearby. Neighbours saw them leaving uh, on foot for yoga class in the village on Monday evening. A friend of Laura's told Belgian newspapers, 7 to 7, they looked happy, they were just enjoying their life on the island. Meanwhile, fish, uh, officials uh, say Belarus nationals, Natalie uh, Believus, 28, was brought missing on March 27, along with her son, uh, Valdemir Masala. The SOS uh, Despresidius, Presados, sorry, Association has seen, said they suspect the case to be a parental abduction according to the Canary 7. The pair are said to be in Belarus, having been pictured on social media since their disappearance. Valdivir's father said the relationship broke down between the pair and reported that this had been suspected they would travel to Eastern European nation. So 
uh, I mean, these, you know, these videos and clips are just going to be about Tenerife and why are so many people going missing there? They, you know, there has to be an explanation for this. Is there a killer on the island or a lot of suspicious activity, which obviously we've talked about quite a few cases um, that has been happening recently with missing people. But Tenerife, uh, I think there's something bigger going on there than what we first thought. What I realised about um, Tenerife, there's a lot more uh, people missing and cases, ongoing cases still going on. Some of them resolved. Some of them have never been uh, resolved uh, due to maybe not enough policing or funding. Uh, I think it's been a major problem. I'd probably say over the last five years, question whether something much more sinister is going on on the island of Tenerife. This is because it's come to light that it's not only Jay Slater that's missing. And the case I'm about to tell you about is really dark so viewer discretion is advised. Laura Trapanias and Mark Ulbrich were last seen on the 22nd of April 2024. The pair had vanished from their home in Tenerife and there was no sign of them until May the 1st 2024. This is when Laura's decapitated body was discovered floating near the coast of Tenerife. She had a bag over her head and also had no legs. There was strong that was the, um, the reading up of through the newspaper. That was the newspaper, but it wasn't as big as the, the, the Jay Slater case. But I did hear something from it. But again, the police tried to play this down. Indications that the body had been in the water for many days due to decomposition. And her husband, Mark, remains missing. They were a Belgian couple, so they weren't local to Tenerife. This raises concerns that something a lot more sinister is going on on the island. Would you still be going on holiday to Tenerife after hearing this? I'm going to link the articles where I got this information down in the comments. And I'm hoping and praying for Mark and Jay's safe return. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean, you know, she was found decapitated. That's just unbelievable. You know, that just tells me a hell of a lot that there's a lot of kidnappings going on there. Um, there's a massive underworld. When I first looked into, um, obviously, the Jake Slater case, uh, which is now a close nearly, um, we have got the burial on the weekend and our RIP to Jay and um, obviously his condolences to his family. But there are unusual cases which you actually think what the hell is going uh, on there. So I'm going to see whether I can find some more information uh, on this couple. If I do, I will put it up. It's a little bit more, more information on Laura and um, her husband going missing. According to new information, a Belgian couple Laura Trapnier's age 66 and her husband, Mark Albrecht's age 71, was last seen on the 22nd of April, 2024, on the island of Tenerife. A missing persons report was issued The two lived in the town of Adage, in the southwest of the island. Their car, a blue opal mock-up with a Spanish license plate, could not be traced either. After searching for several days, the lifeless body of the missing Laura Trapniers was recovered floating from the sea in the Canary Spain near Orico by a fisherman on April 27. While Laura has been confirmed dead, her husband Mark is still nowhere to be found. Laura's husband is 1.75 meters tall with a slim build, gray hair, and... This is crazy because she was um, uh, found with some of her parts amputated missing, uh, which is just unbelievable. So that, you know, basically tells you um, she was murdered, uh, which is just absolutely sickening. And these people probably a retirement home. Um, they were, you know, getting on a bit. And that is just absolutely um, horrendous. And this, it was reasonably big a few months ago, but the actual case is just not gone absolutely cold now. And green eyes. The alert to find him still remains active. So the Desaparecidos asks anyone with information that could facilitate his location to call as soon as possible. Follow us for more on Eyewitness News. 
Sometimes there's a lot going on sometimes which you we don't know about. I sometimes think with the police, it's, it, it, it's manpower, it's funding, and I, I, I think they can only do so much about a missing person or just keep it on file and hope someone comes in with some information or eyewitnesses. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible that a lot of these ones that have come over, uh, missing people who've come out missing in the last three years, right, some of them found uh, murdered or body parts missing or buried. It um, seems pretty strange what's, what's, what's going on there. You, you, you actually hear rituals um, in the mountains. Um, we know that it's rife with uh, mafia. And I think going out there, you've got to be ever so careful. This is more info on Laura Trapineers and her husband, Mark Albrecht, um, missing. Well, she was found uh, dead with body parts uh, missing, which is just really, really shocking. And then Mark hasn't been found uh, as yet. So this is a little bit more on the case. A couple enjoying their life under the Spanish sun suddenly vanishes without a trace. Laura Trapaniers is found dead, her body discovered in the ocean, while her husband, Mark Olbrechts, remains missing. How did this tragedy unfold? Who could be behind this horrific act? In this video, we delve into the puzzling case of Laura and Mark. On the seemingly ordinary day of April 22nd, 2024, Laura Trapaniers and Mark Olbrechts, a retired Belgian couple who had made Tenerife their home, mysteriously disappeared after the alarm in their home in the town of Adeje went off. The house door was wide open and keys and a mobile phone were still inside. Their disappearance initiated a large-scale search operation across the island involving local police. That's mad. Uh, I mean, uh, someone said to me that there's a lot of sort of kidnapping uh, that goes over there and money ransoms and uh, ransoms and stuff so it could be it could be about that maybe they had a bit of money or said to have a bit of money or being watched before uh these things happen to them is absolutely dreadful and international agencies friends and family anguished and baffled quickly turned to social media to disseminate their photos and seek any clues from the public the couple's blue opal mocker was reported missing alongside them and a witness later claimed to have seen the vehicle on a scarcely travelled road near the rocky coast on the day they vanished, suggesting they may have planned a trip or visit to a less frequented location. This new piece of information added a complex layer to the mystery, intensifying the investigation and community concern. Just days after Laura Trapaniers and Mark Olbrechts were reported missing, a chilling turn of events occurred when Laura's body was discovered floating in the sea by a fisherman who quickly alerted the authorities. A plastic bag was... It's funny that the Coast Guard and the Jay Slater um, had a tip off uh, that he was somewhere. And, you know, you know, we've got someone out at sea who's finding the, vi the victim's head and both legs and one hand had been cut off. That is just unbelievable, executed. That's just absolutely sick. Uh, I, I, what it sounds like to me when I looked into the case was just that it was a robbery gone wrong. It's just so sad uh, at the end of the day. Or maybe they thought they had a lot of money on, um, in the house or was worth a lot. But there's a lot of this that goes on. Place over the victim's head and both legs and one hand had been cut off, according to Belgian reports. This grim find instantly escalated the situation from a mere disappearance to a full-blown murder investigation, casting a dark shadow over the Serene Island community. The condition of Laura's body suggested she had been in the water for several days, which aligned with the timeline of her disappearance. Autopsy results were pending, but initial examinations indicated that the woman found had been killed with intentional violence, intensifying the urgency to locate Mark whose whereabouts remained a mystery. This discovery not only deepened the sorrow among their family and friends, but also launched a series of investigative actions aimed at unravelling the circumstances surrounding her death and Mark's disappearance. 
forensic team scoured the area for any evidence that could lead to understanding what had happened. When you hear things like happened this, to the couple, or who might be responsible. When you hear things like this, it's just absolutely uh, shocking. Because, like I said, sometimes you don't know the motive. Uh, it, it, you know, there's so many. Like I said, they could have been watched, and you know, these people who robbed them thought they may have had uh, money or goods or stuff or. You know, because they don't seem like people to me who were involved um, in this crime. I just don't see that. You know, I just think they were just living their best lives and uh, come across someone, you know, who was greedy and disgusting behaviour. That's unbelievable. And yet Mark hasn't been found yet. Responsible for such a heinous act. As detectives dove into the case of Laura Trapaniers and Mark Olbrecht, they considered multiple theories, each more unsettling than the last. The possibility of a robbery gone wrong was examined due to the disappearance of the couple's car, a key piece of evidence that suggested... Yeah, that's what I thought, and maybe they panicked and thought, you know, we can't keep them alive because, you know, there's too much that could track back um, to, you know, the murderers or the people involved premeditation rather than opportunistic crime. Investigators also looked into whether personal vendettas could have played a role, scrutinising the couple's relationships and any recent conflicts. Insights from neighbours indicated that the couple lived a relatively secluded and quiet life, which made motives related to personal disputes less likely but not impossible. The team extended their investigation to include financial and property records, searching for any anomalies or recent changes that could hint at deeper motives. Theories also ventured into more complex scenarios involving targeted crimes by professional entities, given the meticulous disappearance of Mark and the lack of struggle signs at their residence. Yeah, 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 but like I said, sometimes if they were taken at gunpoint and they, you, you know, elderly, older people, uh, anything, you know, could have happened, you know, but like I said, and with the so much mafia out there and connections, it's a different world, it really is. Each hypothesis brought new challenges and the need for more evidence as the team worked tirelessly to piece together the fragmented clues left behind in this perplexing case. Laura reportedly told one of her friends that she was concerned about their new tenant in a neighbouring villa, which is also owned by the couple. That would have been the last time the woman showed signs of life before her disappearance. As we wrap up this deeply unsettling narrative, several critical aspects of the case remain shrouded in mystery. Mark Olbrecht's whereabouts continue to elude the authorities and the identity of the perpetrator, or perpetrators, behind this cruel act remains unknown. Was Mark also a victim of foul play, or could he be in hiding for reasons unknown? The circumstances of Laura's death raise more questions than answers. Was this a targeted attack? Could there have been an unknown motive linked to their past in Belgium, or perhaps a dispute that followed them to their island retreat? These questions persist. That's completely odd that she was found uh, decapitated and he wasn't found. Uh, so, you know, I just got a feeling at the end of the day that um, my thoughts on this, he's probably not alive e um, either. But um, and obviously they may have been um, uh, split up in just in case one of them escaped or something layers of complexity to an already intricate case. <clears throat> we invite you to share your insights or any theories you might have in the comments below. Your perspective could provide a fresh angle on this perplexing case. Engage with us as we continue to seek clarity in the mysterious and tragic events that unfolded in Tenerife. What are your thoughts on this unresolved case? And don't forget, for more videos about shocking and mysterious crime cases, subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, that's absolutely crazy. That really is. I do hope that Mark um, Albrecht is found um, alive and safe. 
but in, it, it's been a while now and the problem is in sometimes these cases where you've got um, maybe a tenant who was a little bit dodgy um, that's the only line you can really really go on uh, but for them to just to disappear very very quickly and then then a body's found out at sea or body part should I say or you know decapitated is just absolutely absolutely terrible uh, but I do hope they find Mark if I find any more information on this case I'll update you don't forget to subscribe to Streamline uh, Entertainment thank you